honestly, the ability to just pop into a new note here is probably gonna become a lot of people's default. Hey, it's Chris. The iPhone 15 Pro lineup has a new button that replaces the mute switch on previous pros. It's called the action button. It's actually a pretty big deal. And today I'm gonna give you tons of truly cool and useful ideas of how you can put it to use, along with some great tips and lots more. The action button lets you customize and personalize your iPhone experience by letting you access a particular phone feature or app function with the press of a button. Now what's interesting to think about is it is just one button, but it contains endless possibilities. And hopefully today I'm gonna succeed in making this the most interesting and useful action button video on the planet. I've got tons of different options and ideas for you to check out in just a second. But first, let me set the stage. The action button is new to iPhones, but it's not new to Apple. The action button debuted on the Apple Watch Ultra. And while these two action buttons perform similar functions, they obviously have very different looks. And you can see some people were hoping for an orange button to match the Ultra, but I actually don't mind this more subtle approach. Now it's important to understand there's basically two levels of usage for the action button, a basic level and a more advanced level. The basic side of things is just using Apple's built-in defaults here in the settings app. Things like firing up the camera or the flashlight, recording a voice memo, switching your focus modes, basic stuff. But the more advanced mode would be to take advantage of Apple's shortcuts functionality, which basically lets you dream up anything you can imagine and make it happen with the click of the action button. But the hard part there is actually the dreaming up of the cool uses, which is why I'm really excited to share with you some really great ideas. I do wanna point out, just cause it's interesting before we go any further, Apple didn't invent the idea of a remappable button for a phone. Samsung did it before. It's not all that common now, but the Nokia XR21 does have that at the moment. Still, when a feature gets into an iPhone, then it tends to become more mainstreamed, more mass adopted. And I'm already seeing sites like Android Police saying every Android needs to steal the iPhone 15's action button. And I'm seeing a lot of articles on Key Mapper in the Google Play Store to help help Android users map their volume buttons to do something like an action button. The way I'm using the action button is with a shortcut I created for myself that helps me remember important information I've saved that I'm otherwise likely to forget about. I can surface it instantly, kind of like an inspiration button. So basically I have this note set up and when I press the action button, it randomly displays one of the bullet points from that note. And here's what that looks like in shortcuts. And I have to give a shout out to Matthew Casanelli for helping me get that figured out. So I spent a ton of time collecting some of the best ideas I could find for uses for the action button. But before we get into it, just like the action button lets you unlock your phone's full potential, my course, Learning to Be Productive, can help you unlock your full potential by helping you get more done in less time in the Apple ecosystem with less burnout. And now for less money because it's on sale for a very limited time. A recent customer just told me that it was life-changing. Check it out, it's linked up down below. All right, let's kick off this action buttons idea segment by talking about the craziest setups first, just for the wow factor. And then we'll get to the more simple setups that are still very useful that your average person is more likely to use after that. The craziest, most action-packed action button setups are probably gonna involve some sort of context awareness. So being aware and changing functionality based on things like location or focus mode or even device orientation. Here's an example of somebody who set up their focus mode based on orientation. So in portrait mode, it's gonna toggle the silent mode in landscape on the right. It'll take a photo, landscape left, it'll take a video. Our man Steven got his set up to change based on the focus mode. And he's actually got a great video that's gonna show you how that works and help you get it set up. And this next user actually had a really great idea, triggering actions based on the time of day and location combined. So get train times in the morning, launch to-dos at work, and then maybe launch the journal app when they're home for the evening. Another genius context aware idea has to do with whether or not your phone is connected to your home Wi-Fi network. If connected to the home Wi-Fi network and it's before noon, then open the bedroom blinds or otherwise open the TV remote but when not connected to Wi-Fi, pop into shopping mode. So for those of you who are into home automation, you could also use this to set up an entire home scene. So those various context-aware action button triggers are gonna be pretty powerful 
and cool. But something else that I think is gonna be even more popular potentially is activating either a list or a folder. In this case, a folder like Parker's got set up, which actually gives you a variety of options with the press of the action button, basically turning it into several buttons in one. And again, this comes from Steven, but you could have it set up an action button menu like this, where you get an option that's a list. And here's somebody who's got a list for themselves as well. It's basically their personal command center. So I actually think that's gonna be one of the top uses for the action button, is just bringing up more than one option for you to choose from. Of course, you could just use it to bring up a quick note. That is going to be one of the best productivity focused uses. Honestly, the ability to just pop into a new note here is probably gonna become a lot of people's default. Using the action button to set up reminders is gonna be great. And actually Ian's full of lots of great ideas. I like this one, which is just push to tweet or post now that it's X. And I really like this upcoming idea here. For those of you that don't like automatic AirPod switching, setting up the action button to connect to the AirPods might be a lifesaver. Then you don't have to worry about your audio suddenly pulling off to another device that you didn't want it to, but it's still easy to connect. Underrated idea is rotation lock toggle. If you ever are laying in bed or on the couch or something, and you're facing a direction that isn't up and down, and you're tired of apps rotating the screen on you, that's pretty brilliant, actually, to use the action button to lock the orientation. Lots of people, of course, are unhappy with Siri, and so you're gonna see a lot of people remapping this to fire up either ChatGPT or Google Assistant. I actually think that Siri's about to get much, much smarter and more capable. We're gonna see a generative AI version of Siri, I think, sometime soon. I made a video about it a while back that you can dig into if you want. But one of the more interesting shortcuts that I saw somebody post was swapping between their cellular plans, using the action button to switch between their primary and secondary eSIM. Of course, you can have the action button launch FaceTime and call somebody specifically. I'm already seeing a nickname for this one, the girlfriend button. But yeah, quick access to somebody, that's a pretty neat idea. If you're a Tesla driver, there are tons and tons of ways to use the action button. Of course. That's what the action button was really made for. Brandon's already got a map to the fart sound, but actually you can set it to lock or unlock your Tesla, or there's several other sorts of vehicle controls that you can map the button to as well. One great idea I saw had to do with speaking the screen, which is a new accessibility feature. Maybe as you're brushing your teeth or getting ready in the morning, or when you're driving, you know, have CarPlay read that to you. Really like the idea of saving articles or videos for read it later or watch later lists. Just whenever you come across something that you wanna save, basically just bookmark it. It's a bookmark button. Here's somebody who said it fires up the QR code that lets them into their gym, that's cool. Here's somebody who's using it to unlock their front door. You gotta be real careful with that. And then finally, Jimmy here has probably the most complicated shortcut I've ever seen as it relates to this discussion. Here's what it looks like. He's got it set up differently if he's using his watch versus his phone, pretty in depth. So you can really push things to the limits here. That's going beyond the scope of this particular video, but wow. So hopefully you found some great ideas for how you can put the action button to use. But now I do have a couple of really good tips for you, which you're gonna be really glad you stuck around to hear about. I know that creating a shortcut from scratch can be kind of intimidating if you don't know anything about coding. And that's why I wanna point out Routine Hub. It's a website that's a database of different shortcuts that people have shared. So it's a great place to dive in and check it out, see what other people are doing and using and actually just download those shortcuts to start using yourself. So that's good for beginners, but there's another thing called Toolbox Pro, which I'll link up for you, which is free to download and gives you 130 powerful new actions for shortcuts. So if you're pretty good with shortcuts already, but you wanna advance a little further, that would be a great place to check out. Another big tip for you though, if you're really excited about your action button, is to be careful what case you go with. This is a case of not just going by looks or protection level or comfort in terms of holding it, because if you get a case that has a cutout for your action button, that might actually make it harder to push versus a case that puts a button over the action button, which actually makes it easier. So. Be smart if you're excited about this feature. Now I've even seen some people complaining about how difficult it is to press the action button with Apple's popular clear MagSafe case. So do your research. I wanna wrap things up by having a more robust discussion about the action button itself. For instance, it's only available on Apple's Pro iPhone 15 lineup. So that begs the question, is this a Pro feature? My feeling on that is 
most people actually aren't gonna use the really advanced shortcuts functionality. I think a lot of people are just gonna end up using the basic built-in features that Apple shipped here. Sometimes Apple does this trickle-down thing where they'll start with some features on a pro model device, maybe the iPad for instance, and then those features will trickle down to the lower tier, more budget-friendly devices. We'll just have to see if that ends up being the case here, but I will say this is up there with the telephoto lens for me, the five times optical zoom that you get on the Pro Max, which is not on the regular Pro, the one that I've got here. I find the action button that good, that useful. So it's really gonna depend on how you plan on using your iPhone. For a lot of people, the camera is everything. For other people, you know, the time spent taking photos and video is less then they use it for other things, so. But there is a discussion to be had on simplicity versus versatility. Because on previous iPhones, it was very simple. It was just the mute switch. That's all that this little section of the phone did. And now, that button can do so much more that it might be overwhelming to people. Whenever you add functionality, you're also adding complexity. But in this case, I actually think that that was a good trade-off that Apple made. When you turn the thing on, it automatically defaults to being basically a mute switch like it used to be. But on the other hand, I could see some other people being like, it's actually too simple. I wish that I could double tap it or triple tap it. Kind of like the way that Apple's accessibility feature worked where you could double tap or triple tap on the back there to launch a shortcut. And this doesn't do that. Even so, it does a lot. Your iPhone is now so much more customizable, personalizable, all thanks to the action button. I think it's a great addition. I'm really excited to keep using it, explore new uses. And if you have a great use, a genius idea that I didn't cover here in the video, please feel free to comment it. Let's make this video one of the most useful resources for people checking out the action button. And before we get out of here, speaking of useful, check out my course, Learn to Be Productive. Here at Daily Tech, we're trying to make your life better inside the Apple ecosystem. We also have a newsletter for you, comes out on Fridays, surfaces some really cool stuff. I hope you check that out as well. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Later.